Hi, my name's Holly and welcome to today's session on apprenticeship applications. Now, I'm going to take you through the next 10 or so minutes and give you some hints, tips, tricks, um, anything that I can to help you when it comes to an apprenticeship application form, including how you actually get to the point of applying for an apprenticeship. OK, so first things first, this is what the application process typically looks like for an apprenticeship. First of all, you need to be searching for your vacancies. And again, I'll go into a little bit more detail about where you can find those online vacancies in a moment. Once you've found your vacancy, you then apply. Hopefully, after you've applied for your apprenticeship, you are going to go through some shortlisting. Now, there's a step before you get to interview stage normally when it comes to apprenticeships, and that is a stage of assessment usually come in two different forms. You've got things like um, online assessments, things like psychometric testing, verbal reasoning, judgment skills, numerical valuing, those types of things. You then have assessment centres. Now, assessment centres are slightly different, and this is where they will bring along their shortlist of candidates and ask you to do things like group activities together, um, and they'll assess your employability skills. They're looking for the people who really stand out. After you've done those assessments, again, there'll be a period of shortlisting again so that they can take away the best individuals from the application and the assessment stage. Once that has occurred, you will go through the interview process. Once you've done that, hopefully you are going to get an offer, after which you can start your apprenticeship. But what we're going to do is we're going to take it a step back. And first of all, we are going to look at how we actually find apprenticeships. Now, this is relevant for all levels of apprenticeship, whether that be level two or level three, or whether it be those higher and degree level apprenticeships. And I'll give you a little bit more detail about actually which websites are best for those levels of apprenticeship. But everybody's go to starting place when it comes to researching or looking for apprenticeship vacancies definitely should be the find an apprenticeship website. So the gov.uk search result. It's as easy as typing into Google, find an apprenticeship. You click on the gov.uk one and it will take you to the search page. You can look on there through um, apprenticeship vacancies, which are live and current at the moment. Great thing about the Finds an Apprenticeship website is that it does get updated on a daily basis. So all of the vacancies that you see on there are live current uh, vacancies. They're not old or outdated. Um, one of the other good things about the Find an Apprenticeship website is you can set up your alert features. So if you don't have time to visit the Find an Apprenticeship website um, every single day, you can set up your alerts, which means that every time a new vacancy is posted, which matches your search criteria, you will get an email to be aware of that. So you're not missing out on those vacancies, which actually probably will interest you. Now, Find an Apprenticeship website has all different levels of vacancies on there, right from level two all the way up to higher and degree. However, that being said, there perhaps aren't as many higher and degree vacancies on the Find an Apprenticeship website as other places. So yes, Find an Apprenticeship is a really great starting point, but where else can you be looking? Well, we have the vacancy snapshot, which is brought to you by a website called Amazing Apprenticeships. And on their vacancy snapshot, they highlight and profile really big companies and break down their apprenticeship route for you. It will give you uh, reasons why you may want to work for that company, but it will also tell you things like the vacancies which are available, um, reasons perhaps um, or incentives why you might want to apply for them, um, opening dates, closing dates for vacancies, those types of things. So I would definitely recommend having a look on the vacancy snapshots. The UCAS website is uh, fantastic for specifically higher and degree level apprenticeships. They've got an apprenticeship section on there now, so I definitely would recommend if you are perhaps looking for vacancies at higher and degree level. Again, keeping on the theme of higher and degree apprenticeship vacancies, you can also take a look at the higher and degree vacancy listing, which is brought out by the government a couple of times a year. This is the Fire It Up booklet. It's available in an online PDF document, which again is a really great accessible um, resource to be using. Great thing about the higher degree vacancy listing is it will tell you again things like um, where those vacancies are located, what company they're with, 
opening dates and start dates as well. So again, lots of information there. Unfortunately, there is no one online place where you'll find every single vacancy, which can get incredibly frustrating. However, your success with an apprenticeship really comes down to you being proactive um, and starting to do your research early. So where else can you be looking for apprenticeships if not these websites? Go to companies directly, most definitely. So visit company websites, pick up the phone, send off an email, do the really old fashioned thing and write a handwritten letter if you have to. Just get in touch with them. You will find that some companies are advertising apprenticeships, but they are retaining them on their own websites rather than advertising them out on different websites. So definitely go to company websites. Shows you're proactive, shows you've got initiative, but it also shows you're interested in your own development and they're all skills which employers are looking for. Now, young people spend an awful lot of time on social media and organisations are really being switched on to this. And they're realising that actually a good way to make you guys see some of these vacancies is by posting them on social media. So things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, all of these places. So check out social media too. But I definitely can't stress enough the importance or the value in networking with family members, friends, teachers, careers leads, careers professionals, anybody that you know, people in the community, go and start asking questions because the more questions you start asking, the more you will realise that there's lots of um, windows of opportunities out there. But if you're somebody who's waiting for the opportunity to find you, you're perhaps going to be waiting for a really long time. Now, I do appreciate that actually at the moment, things are a little bit more difficult and things are a little bit uncertain given the situation with COVID-19. Does that mean that you should not be researching apprenticeships? Absolutely not. In fact, it means the opposite. Um, you want to start doing your research as early as possible. Start talking with potential employers. Start talking to business people. Um, listen to the news. Hear what industries are crying out for new people, which industries are really going to be recruiting. Things are very difficult at the moment, but you have to have a sense of resilience, which is why we say do as much research as you can as early as possible. Places still most definitely are going to be looking to take on apprentices. But like I said, you've got to get your foot in the door as early as possible. So apprenticeship application tips. What can I tell you? What do you need? What can you start doing? First of all, you need a sensible email address. Potential employers will start judging you based on things like what your email address says about you. Just your name or your name and, and a number at the end is perfectly acceptable. Steer clear of immature and professional ones. If your email address is hamsterlover123, get rid of it, okay? Open a new one, a nice and professional one that you can be using for apprenticeship applications. Make sure that you put on your application form your most up-to-date contact details, phone numbers, email address, but also um, your personal details as well. Nothing worse than an employer trying to get hold of you for a potential interview and you realising that you gave them a number that you've not used in the last three years. So up-to-date contact information is an absolute must. What else can you be doing? Well, in your actual applications, you need to do this. I would always recommend when you're writing your apprenticeship application um, questions out, first of all, write them in a Word document. Why do I suggest that? Well, actually, it makes it easier for you to check your spelling, your punctuation, and your grammar. Again, sounds like a really silly thing, but employers or potential employers will start judging you based on things like your spelling and your grammar. So if you can take the time to really take care, be pedantic about it, make sure you demonstrate your eye for detail, pick up on your spelling mistakes and rectify them before you submit your application form, you're going to be winning. So what else? Um, make sure that you complete your application form in plenty of time. If you know the closing time for an apprenticeship application form is midday on a Friday, don't be sitting with your application form still half incomplete at 11.30. It adds unnecessary stress and pressure to you. You're going to be rushing through it. So make sure you keep yourself enough time to complete your apprenticeship application form. Give yourself enough time as well so other people can check it over and you can look through it several times before actually submitting. 
So what else do you need? You most definitely will need your projected and your achieved grades. This could be GCSEs, it could be A-levels, it could be achieved grades, or it could be those which you are predicted. But you will need those when it comes to applying for apprenticeships. Other useful documents could be things like CVs. Um, I definitely recommend you creating a CV. Um, it just really demonstrates um, your professional profile a little bit uh, in a different format as well. Um, certificates, have you ever been on a health and safety course or a first aid course, or have you got a certificate for volunteering in the community? Anything like that will massively help your application form. Uh, you want to talk specifically about your work experience. Now, this could be a week's work experience that you did through a school programme. It could be that you've had an evening job for the last year or a Saturday job or a part time job. It could be a case that you give up every Tuesday evening to help at a local community group or you volunteer in the community. It could be you've done things like peer mentoring in school or you've been helping younger students with their reading. Does not matter what it is, stick it all down on your application form because it's about demonstrating how employable you are. Your employability skills, your strengths, your qualities and your attributes. Fourth thing you're going to need, buzzwords. What do we mean by buzzwords? Well, I have put a bit of a snapshot of a vacancy on screen now. And I very kindly have circled those buzzwords for you. Those buzzwords or phrases are keywords or phrases which employers purposely put in their uh, vacancies because they want you to notice them. They're the things that they want their future apprentices to demonstrate. So what you do with buzzwords is you highlight them, you take them out of the vacancy and you filter them in through your application form. It shows that you've got an eye for detail and that you take notice and that actually you're really good at matching up your own skills with the skills that your potential future employer is wanting from you. So what could you be asked on an application form? Um, generally, anything. OK, however, that being said, there are three main apprenticeship application forms um, questions which come up pretty much all of the time. So the three most common questions are firstly, what are your main strengths? So you do not want to bullet point a list of skills here. OK, so you don't just want to bullet point communication, leadership, team working, negotiation, flexibility, integrity. Don't do that. OK, you want to meet it up, make it really beefy. And you always want to provide examples um, of times when you've either used those strengths or how you have built them up. So, for example, let's go back here. If they're saying they're wanting somebody with good time management skills and you know you've got good time management skills, talk about it here. OK, how have you developed good time management skills? Um, Another way you can answer this is you can say, um, I'm somebody who possesses really strong leadership qualities and I've had the opportunity to develop these skills through captaining my Sunday league sports team for the last two seasons. Again, it's about filtering real life examples into your application form. Always back everything up with evidence here. Again, this question, you definitely want to refer it back to the vacancy which was posted. What skills would you like to improve during this apprenticeship? OK, really important one as well. Um, another really common one. Two ways to answer this. Firstly, think about your main duties and responsibilities in that role and talk about them here and then talk about things which you haven't spoken about your main strengths. So, for example, if you're going into um, applying for something like digital marketing, you could say something like I'd really like the opportunity to further develop my video making skills. Or you could start saying something like, um, although I am a fantastic team player, um, I would love the opportunity to be mentored to learn how to work a little bit more independently. Start turning it into, an, into a positive. Never, ever make it a negative. So don't say, actually, I need to be better at being confident because I'm really rubbish at it. Turn it into a positive all of the time. Third most common question you will get asked in any apprenticeship application form is this. What are your hobbies and interests? Every single one of you will have hobbies and interests. This is your time to write about them. Why do they ask for your hobbies and your interests? Well, actually, it gives them an idea of what you're like as an individual. It shows them whether you're going to fit into the team. It may be that some of your hobbies and interests are related to what it is you're going into. But first and foremost, and perhaps more importantly, 
it will show them skills that you have got that you haven't necessarily spoken about. So for example, if you're saying that you play Sunday league football, they've got a team can player who is competitive. If you're saying that you're somebody who collects stamps, they've got somebody who's organized with an eye for detail. This is also a, a perfect opportunity for you to talk about your proudest moments, personal achievements, obstacles you've overcome and um, demonstrate your determination and resilience. If you're thinking, I absolutely do not have any hobbies and interests, go and get yourself some, most definitely. So I hope that has been useful for you. That was a really quick bite-sized, short, snappy um, introduction to apprenticeship application forms. If it's not been useful, I'm really sorry. If it has been useful, perfect. On screen now, you will see other places that you can go to um, should you require any more information. Thank you for watching.